Okay, so by now, you've probably seen at least a few videos talking about Canon's PowerShot V10. It's been out for a while now. But in today's video, what I wanna talk about are four reasons why I really enjoy this camera and none of them have anything to do with the image quality. So if you've been on the fence about this little V10, hey, make sure to watch today's video because I might just convince you to go out and buy one. Hey there everybody, we are now back in the studio and like the intro said, today we're gonna to be talking about four reasons why I really do like the Canon V10. Um, now you'll look, if, if you've looked at other videos, just gonna grab my notes here. Um, if you've looked at other videos uh, that content creators have posted about this camera, um, you're probably gonna get some mixed reviews. Um, I would say it's 50-50. Um, some are very, some of those cr content creators are very big on this camera and others are not. And it really depends on what you're gonna be using it for. Uh, because it's it's not one of those cameras that's going to do a lot of things really really well But it is one of those cameras that will do numerous things pretty well. All right, so um, Here's the quick list. I'm going to throw on my glasses so I can read uh, so here here are the four things um, That I really enjoy about this camera and they're in no particular order one is the form factor I like the way this camera is set up and it's really what um gravitated me to this camera. Um, I like the way it's set up. It's small. It's smaller than your cell phone. And you can look at the videos online about specs and size and all that. Um, they do a much better job of that than I do on this channel. So go find those videos. Uh, but the, the size of it is very attractive for someone who's going to be vlogging out and about. Um, I've got it set up on a tripod here on my desk. And so um, as a side note, uh, this is something that uh, I try to do with all of my reviews is I use the camera that I'm reviewing so you can see firsthand what that um, quality is like. Um, also, if you look at some of my shorts, I've got uh, footage from the V10 there just out walking on a trail across the street from the house. So you can check that stabilization, that audio quality, um, the video quality. I'm currently um, recording in auto mode. Uh, 1080p and the reason why 1080p is because uh, when you record in 4k it does limit the uh, amount of time you can record because it will either overheat which is a problem that a lot of smaller cameras have when you record in 4k and um, or <clears throat> it'll have a record limit so I don't want to do that okay so number one is the form factor just the way it's designed small flip up screen love it number two it turns on really fast um, i have some insta insta 360 cameras um, most notably the 360 cameras the x2 and the x3 those cameras take a long time to boot up um, probably the next fastest compared to this one would be um, the dji action camera i've got the action 4 that boots up pretty quick, but like the Insta360 Go 3S, that takes a minute. A GoPro takes a minute. Um, even some of my point and shoot cameras, you know, it takes a minute for the lens to either extend out or for it to boot up. But this camera, because it's a fixed lens and there's not a whole lot to it, you press the power button and it's on. So if, again, you're someone who likes to use a camera out and about, that is one of those features you just can't put a price tag on. And, and it's... It's one of those things that I re I've really come to appreciate with the V10. Number three, price. I got this unit uh, refurbished on the Canon website, $200. Normally, if you go to Amazon right now, you're gonna see this camera for $399. Normally sells for $429. They've knocked it down uh, 30 bucks. So if you go to Best Buy, if you go to Amazon, it's gonna be $399. I got it refurbished works perfectly, got all the same accessories with it, and I got it for $2.99. Now that I think is a sweet spot. That to me is better. That's where it should be, is at that $300 price range. Um, and, and I've got some bonus material at the end, so wait for that, you know, watch the video all the way to the end and you'll see 
where that plays a more important role. So hang in there. All right, so that was price. That's number three. Number four is size. Now this is different than form factor because form factor is just the way it's designed with the kickstand, with the flip up screen, and the way the the lens is on the front with the power button or the, the shutter button right there. That's how I use it. I mean, that's how you use it. And so the form factor is, in my opinion, one of it, it's quirky, but it's a strong suit for this particular camera. Now the size, again, I talked about it, pocketable. I actually threw this in my back pocket when I was in Nashville this past weekend, and I took it with me everywhere I went. I was able to get some great shots, some video. Uh, battery lasted the entire weekend, didn't have to charge the battery at all. So there are those I would say that the battery life is pretty bad. The draw, the, the drawback is that it's an internal battery, so you can't exchange the battery once it dies. You have to wait for it to charge back up. But, you know, as long as you stay on top of that, or if you've got a uh, portable battery, a brick with you, then you can charge it while you're out and about. So size is another big win for this particular camera. All right, now for that bonus material. The other camera that I took with me and the one that I like using a lot is my Sony ZV-1F. Uh, ZV-1F, yeah, that's right. And so I compare these two, they're, they're shooting for the same market, all right? And so I put down some notes here of how they compare uh, against each other. And now I'm not gonna put the footage up, that's very subjective. Some people like, you know, one image over another and it, it, it all depends on what you like and your preferences. Uh, but what I will tell you are these basic categories um, and my opinion. So image quality. When you compare the two against each other, and again, this is subjective, but what I found more often than not is that the quality from the ZV-1F is better. Uh, this particular camera tends to get overblown pretty easy, um, but as long as you mind the brightness level and you use the ND filter, sometimes you can overcome that. What I found with this camera is I could get it to look really good after I did some editing. Uh, so it recorded the information that I needed and I was able to manipulate it. And a uh, side note again on this point, this has a very small file size. When I was taking my photos, I was surprised that none of them were bigger than one megabyte. They were all in kilobytes. And so they were pretty small files, still retained a lot of data, and I was able to um, edit them and get them to look really good in Lightroom. Uh, so image quality I would give to the ZV-1F, both with, I, I would say, well, we'll get to that part in later, but just overall image quality, ZV-1F. Um, ease of use, V10, by far. It's so much easier to use because it, it's just, designed to be turn on and use. Um, so I could just flip the screen up or if I was gonna sh take a picture of something, just hit that power button and it's on instantly, take the picture, turn it off, put it back in my pocket. Where with a traditional point shoot camera, it's not that quick, not that easy. There's usually you got a half shutter, you have to half press the shutter button to get it to focus. And so there are other steps with a point shoot camera or with any other camera. I like the this one, very easy to use. So I will give the ease of use to the V10. Uh, let's go with stabilization. Uh, between this and the ZV-1F, I like the stabilization out of this camera a little bit better. It does come at a, a cost. There's a bit of a crop. Uh, ZV-1F, again, minor crop. But you can see some, um, when I use the ZV-1F, even though it's got a blurry or background in the back, you can see where it's got... Um, and I don't know the, the technical term for it, but where it pulses a little bit and where it's trying to figure out your focus point between you and what's in the back. And so it really struggles in that uh, aspect sometimes. Sometimes it'll focus on you. Sometimes it focuses what's in the back. And when you're walking around, you'll see that kind of pulsing in the background. And so I, I much prefer the stabilization on the V10. Um, photos, ZV-1F, I prefer those photos. They're, it's, it's Sony. And so it's gonna be a great image when you take pictures. But with video, I call it a tie um, because the, the subject on the V10 looks great and what's around the subject. Now what's in the back might get blown out or it might not um, get the same amount of detail. Uh, it's a 2.8 uh, aperture. So you're not gonna get that uh, depth of field that you get with the ZV-1F. Uh, so I like that look better. 
Um, but as far as, you know, the video, it's a tie. Like, look, look at this image. This is perfectly fine for YouTube. And this is 1080p. Don't even have it in 4K. Um, okay, price and value. Again, this is where I was talking about. If you can get this for less than the 399 then this is a much better value. Uh, right now, the ZV-1F is selling for around, uh, I think it was 449 And so that's a steeper price point than this 399 uh, but you're getting a little more out of that. You're getting that whole product showcase. You're getting the defocus, the background. Uh, you're getting some other things with that that are more traditional camera centric where this knows its lane. It's just very simple, easy to use, doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles. And I almost appreciate that more because it makes it easier to use out and about. Um, all right, last thing, features. We just talked about it. The ZV-1F has more features. And so if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for a feature-rich camera that's going to give you more flexibility to do a wider range of things, well, then you go with the Sony ZV-1F. But if you're looking for something pretty much one-dimensional, take pictures and video while you're out and about, vlogging style, then I do like the V10. Uh, the focus, the autofocus has been very reliable. I mean, I've got the box around my face now, and no matter where I go, the box follows me, and it's very reliable. Um, when, again, while I was out this weekend, I didn't have any issues with it. It was very, very reliable, dependable, and I enjoyed using it a lot. This this will be my go-to camera. Now, the one, I don't want to say one downside, but the one thing I did notice that was kind of frustrating, no zoom. You have no zoom on this, and that is frustrating. The ZV-1F does have a digital zoom. It's a two-time zoom. It's nothing great. It's just zooming in on those pixels. And so uh, when you do that, you run the risk of the image getting a little grainier. Uh, but I, I mean, this is a kind, the kind of camera that you really don't want to be taking pictures of things far away. Now I did do some landscape photos like sunsets and things. Those came out great. Um, but as long as you're not trying to zoom in on something that's far away, then this is perfectly fine. So to sum it all up, I like the V10. I'm very happy that I got made this purchase. This has been a very reliable, dependable, fun to use camera. And um, compared to the ZV-1F, it holds its own, but it, it struggles when you come when you look at the the feature to feature comparison. All right, and look look at this uh, um, blur. I mean the the shutter speed and everything. So it's very natural because I've got it at 1080p 30. So I can't, I, I just really can't, I haven't found a fault that, I will say this, not a fault, a struggle, things, something to be cognizant of, the lens. When you start putting this in your pocket, it doesn't have a lens cover. Now, neither does the ZV-1F. It doesn't come with a lens, well, it comes with a lens cap, all right, and it's very small. Um, but if you... If you're using the ZV-1F, it's got a fixed lens and you have to be aware of smudges on the front, but it's a very, it's much smaller and I, I, I don't have the camera right in front of me, it's right back there. And so it's very small compared to this. So what I ended up doing is I went out and bought uh, a lens cover. It's a piece of glass that you just uh, stick on over the lens. Uh, so that I can prevent some of those smudges on there. Because once it gets smudged, it is it was hard to get a fingerprint off of that lens. And so I found that I had to have a cloth with me to clean that up a lot. So I got this. It's a piece of glass that just sticks on over it. This has a lens cap. And so now I can protect that lens. And um, and so now this gla that glass is a lot easier to clean. Just wipe that off. Doesn't hold on to smudges. So that's that's a good thing. So, hey, though, that's my take. Those are my reasons why I really like this camera and I'm um, hoping you found some value in that if you're on the fence about the V10. Uh, do me a favor, if this is the kind of content you like, talking cameras and tech, uh, do me a favor, become a subscriber and hit that notification bell. And uh, hey, leave a comment. Let me know what you liked about this video and what you think about the V10. You know, what you've heard, uh, what you, if you found something out in today's video that maybe changed your opinion on that camera. And uh, hey, if there's any kind of other videos that you'd like to see on the channel, let me know that. Let me know that down in the comments below. But hey, for now, this is Mike. This is Load F Media. We will see you in the next one.